Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture today on lumbar puncture. So, it is a practical session. So, here, uh, this is the lumbar puncture needle. I don't have the instruments with me. So, I'm just showing you the pictures of them. So, this is lumbar puncture needle. Okay, lumbar puncture needle, it has a stylet and also it has a stylet and also the base of the needle has a notch so that it can accommodate the stylet. The thing is, it is something like this uh, pen. I don't have the instrument. So, yeah, see, uh, here, if, if you think this is the needle, this is the stylet, it, this... Um, needle at the base it will have an opening it will be really small it's just like uh, uh, an idea so this base this is the needle this the base of the needle will have a hole so that the stylet can be fit like this okay this is similar to this is this uh, this is similar here if you just open here you will see a small stylet which can come out okay and there will be needle in the needle okay how are you going to do it what is the procedure the procedure is mostly the patient this is the lumbar pos puncture position it has to we can do either in lying position or in sitting position but but mostly it is done in lying position that too the patient uh, lies in left lateral decubitus position if you see he's lying in left lateral decubitus position he is lying in left lateral decubitus position and he will have to bring his knees that is the lower limbs should be drawn together so that he'll have to flex the neck he will have to flex the chin and he will have to flex the knees and thigh and he should uh, lie down in this position okay now um, uh, always you should uh, see whether there are some deformities of the spine or not before we attempt this procedure whenever you find some deformities in the spine mostly lumbar spondylosis in such cases we will adopt the sitting position whenever there are deformities of spine like lumbar spondylosis in such cases we try to do in sitting position what we do is first we will swab the area and then we will give local anesthetic Okay, local anesthetic is given. That is mostly 5, milli, 5 milliliters of 2% lignocaine. We give 5 milliliters of 2% lignocaine is given. And then after giving uh, that, with the help of a swab, with the help of a swab, what we do is, we will draw a line. See, the person is lying like this. Okay, we will see his iliac crests. Okay, at the highest point of the iliac crest, we'll just take a swab. Okay, which is dipped in antiseptic solution. If this, uh, if you think that uh, there is a swab, which is, if this is the swab, you'll dip it in antiseptic solution and you will draw a line which is connecting both the iliac crests. Okay, that is the highest point of iliac crests. Connecting both the highest point of iliac crest. This line which we have drawn, this passes between L3 and L4, which is the most important, most um, commonly used intervertebral space. It is the intervertebral space of choice for performing lumbar puncture. What is it? It is between L3 and L4. Now, you will take the needle and you will pierce the needle one centimeter below the spinous process of the li vertebrae lying above that is in these two vertebrae the, the upper vertebrae is l3 just below the l3 that to one centimeter below the l3 you will just if this is the patient okay think that this is the patient you will just put you will hold the needle like this and then you will just um, pierce the skin and the direction should be in cephalic. See, the direction of the needle should be a little cephalic, upper, a little cephalic. If you see, this is the direction. You can see the direction of the needle. The direction of the needle is uh, a little upwards, right? The direction of the needle should be a little cephalic. And you will just pierce it. While piercing, you will find... See, if you have pierced, first you will find... Um, a resistance. And then, first you will find some resistance. 
that is because of this ligament there will be a uh, ligament between the two vertebrae right so because of that ligament between the two vertebrae you will find that is spinal lig spinous ligament because of that you will find the resistance and because of the dura mater also you will find the resistance once you have pierced the, 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 the dura mater the resistance is left is gone so there is a feeling of giving away that is the resistance is gone and then you will remove the stylet and then once you remove the stylet this is the stylet if you just remove the stylet here from here you can remove the stylet once you remove the stylet there will be needle through the hole which is present in the needle the needle is hollow so as a result through that hollow space the spinal fluid will come out okay cerebrospinal fluid is come out and this cerebrospinal fluid which has come out it is collected in three different bottles that two eight drops are collected in each bottle in each bottle we collect eight drops okay it should not exceed 3 cc okay the the cerebrospinal fluid which we take that should not be more than 3 cc that is it should be maximum of 3 cc and you will collect eight drops in each okay like that you'll collect eight drops in each and then uh, once you have collected this you will uh, see whether this then you will have to analyze it one thing to differentiate between uh, in the practicals they they can ask us to differentiate between the um, bloody tap and subarachnoid hemorrhage the main way how we can differentiate it is if csf if if think that there is a bloody tap we have injured some vessels and as a result there is bloody tap that bloody tap is seen only in the first uh, bottle if all the three bottles are uniformly stained if all the three bottles all the three drops three bottles which you have taken in all the three bottles if there is blood uniformly that too uniformly blood stained blood stained uniformly in such cases you will have to think that it is an internal bleed most commonly subarachnoid hemorrhage if the uh, if the uh, if the bottles are not uniformly uh, stained that is in the first bottle there is uh, lots of red color that is lots of blood staining and in the thing that in the first bottle there is lots of blood staining and in the second bottle there is less blood staining and in third bottle it is clear okay in such cases it is a traumatic tap okay this is how you differentiate between the bloody tap and the traumatic tap okay so we have done, we have understood about the lumbar puncture now let us learn the indications of lumbar puncture what are the indications of lumbar puncture the main indications it is in diagnostic lumbar puncture is done for meningitis that is one and you will have to uh, look for you will have to see the therapeutic indications through the lumbar puncture uh, through the that is intrathecally you can give some drugs intrathecally what are the drugs which can be given some cytotoxic drugs most commonly methotrexate or steroids can be given intrathecally so these are the main investigations a main diagnosis indications and it can be also used for some investigatory procedures like encephalography or myelography okay in all these cases we can do this lumbar puncture and even in some diagnosis like gullian barre syndrome we can do this uh, lumbar puncture it's not uh, it's not important but we can also do in them okay now what are the complications of this lumbar puncture complications the complications is meningitis one because we are introducing the needle into the um, csf flow that is into the spinal space central canal of spinal cord we are introducing the uh, needle if this is not sterile then that can cause meningitis and sometimes the patient can complain of post lumbar puncture headache okay and one more complication is uh, for this you'll have to know the contraindication the one most important contraindication is increased intracranial tension or intracranial pressure whenever there is raised intracranial pressure never never attempt lumbar puncture because if you do lumbar puncture in raised intracranial pressure 
here already the intracranial pressure that is the pressure in the cranium around the CSF that is more so once you have punctured it the CSF may gush out and because of that the brain which is there there is release of pressure suddenly as a result there may be coning of the brain here there is release of pressure suddenly that can cause coning of the brain so never never attempt um, the lumbar puncture whenever there is increased intracranial pressure and also whenever there is local skin sepsis even then we should not attempt the lumbar puncture and the other complications are so complications whenever there is whenever we have done an intra increased intracranial pressure then the main complication is coning so coning if done in raised intracranial tension so always always remember one thing which is most important that it is done between l3 and l4 and also lower board one centimeter below the l3 this is the site where we do lumbar puncture never never forget this okay and don't forget about the bloody tap so these are the main uh, things which we should know in lumbar puncture so i think you understood about lumbar puncture so thank you guys for watching my lecture if you have any doubts please comment it in the comment section if you feel something is inadequate in this lecture even then comment it in the comment section Thank you for watching my lecture. Don't forget to look at this needle. It is so small, thin, slender needle. Okay. So, thank you for watching my lecture. Thank you.